Hello there, good evening everybody. Um, oh, hello Denise and Margaret and Andra and Julia on YouTube and we're busy on Facebook, uh, 101 already. So Linda, oh, Linda, she's just walked out the door. Just when Ruby and Coco were saying hi. Oh, um, oh it says there, we've got Jean and Sheila. Hello, Morag. Hello, Geraldine and Sue. Sorry if I'm missing anybody. Um, coming through thick and fast this evening. So six o'clock on a Wednesday evening. This is the first to be this late, isn't it? Sorry about that. So uh, hopefully you weren't waiting for me at four. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Helen. Hi, Julie. And uh, Beverly and Debbie. Been very warm in links. Been very warm. Where have you been today? In Bedfordshire, where the office is, and, um, and certainly up here as well. Um, hello, Alisa. Um, Wendy and Jane and Shelley and Cher. Hello, Cher. Uh, Denise and Angela and Trisha and Janet and Donna. Hello to you. Oh, it's like a poem. That was almost the start of a little ditty, wasn't it? Um, hello, Stephanie, Barbara, Margaret. Hello, everybody. Um, oh, I did, I did make it. Mind you, you weren't there on Saturday, were you? I did say on Saturday I'd be late today, sorry. And I, I did put a little post on Facebook to say I'd be late today. So. Um, hello, Simone, Elizabeth, Terry, and Bernadette, watching on a big TV. Oh, that's where your wrinkles were a little under, isn't it? Mary's in Spain. Bet it's blooming hot over there, Mary. Um, hi, Karen Ann, Christine, Alison. So I thought what we're going to do, um, I do have a new range of fabrics to show you. Um, and then I was asked to show, or so I can't remember your name. I'm sorry if you're watching, but somebody uh, messaged me and said, "Could you, could you give me a link to the cushion cover where you made a zip on the back and covered it up?" And I can't find it. I don't know where I did that, so I thought I'll do it again. So we're going to put a zip into the back of a cushion cover. Um, there's a few different ways of of doing that. What stand in the corner now? Okay, I'll do it later. I shall put myself in the corner later, Lisa. Um, hi, Leanne. Uh, Leanne, is that? Andrea, hello. Um, so, yeah, so I, th I thought we'd do that. So lots of different ways of putting zips into cushion covers, but this technique, you don't see it. And it's really, really easy. So I just thought we'll have a look at that today. Um, hello, Nancy and Gina and Anne and Lisa in Cyprus. I bet it's blooming hot in Cyprus as well, isn't it? Um, surely the meeting went went on and on. It was lovely. We had a we had a very nice day. So we had a meeting with um, the Create and Craft buyers at, at our office um, in Bedfordshire, and then I, I said I'm going to take you out for lunch. I've booked a restaurant. We're going out for lunch, and they said we're paying. Oh, that was, that was very nice. So um, yes, we, me and Kim and um, and the girls all went out for lunch together, which was very nice. So a lot of things going on with Create and Craft, which is quite exciting. Can't tell you yet. I've got my first show with them on the um, on the 10th of July at 11 o'clock in the morning. It's not very far away, is it? About three weeks, less than three weeks now. And um, we've designed some new panels. So something, we're, we're revisiting the hedgerow panel, if you remember that from years ago. Um, but there's some new panels on there, which are, which are re very summery and, and very nice. And some fabric bundles as well. So there's lots of new stuff going on. Um, and then, oh, unbearably hot. But I had a storm last night. Today's been fresher. Always nice to have a storm after the heat, isn't it, Mary? Um, oh, Janice. What did you do for the last couple of hours then? I do, do you know, Hazel, I do love the weather. I love the weather when I'm not working. I don't mind pottering around in the garden and doing a bit of weeding and enjoying the sunshine. Um, but when you're stuck in front of a camera like this and your hair's sticking to your face, it's not, it's not very glamorous. So that's the only time I don't like the heat, but I'm, I am a fan of the heat. Sunny in Florida, says Susanna. And uh, it's Indiana Teresa. What's it like in Indiana weather-wise? Um, you, you probably realised if you're in the States, we love talking about the weather in Britain. It's the thing that we talk about every. What's the weather going to be like? Because we never know. It could be snowing tomorrow. Um, trying to make the caravan content stand out at the base. Annie, I don't know what caravan you're making. Um, message me, because I'm not, I'm not sure what caravan, uh, what caravan you mean. Um, and I said, oh, Alan, thank, uh, yeah, thank you for letting me know. Nan's doing a lot better. So send her all our wishes, won't you, Alan? Uh, hot and sunny Blackpool. Can you show how to pattern match the tree fabric on the bag in the background? Did it a while back. 
Uh, oh, the Poppins bag, Marion. That was a while ago, wasn't it? Um, I did, if you're a member of the Harvey Art Club, I did do a thing on pattern matching there. I haven't got that fabric with me. Um, but yes, I'll, I'll put that on the list and we'll, we'll do that one week if you like. Hot and sticky in Virginia. I'll take snow every day. Oh no, I'll take hot and sticky. Much prefer the hot and sticky. Um, hello, Sarah. Lovely to watch your life have changed. Did the horse, horse earlier, so not to miss you. Not quite the same on catch-up. It's nice to be interactive, isn't it? Sarah, nice to have you along. Um, oh, is the tennis... I don't, watch, I, don't, I don't really watch sports on TV. Gary normally does. Uh, so the, the tennis is probably on in there, but, um, but I don't watch it. Lovely in Kent. Lovely. OK, so anyway, that's what I've been doing all day. Business meetings, but but very pleasant chat. They are very, they are very nice girls. Sophie and Ria been having a catch up with today, and we're, we've been planning like the rest of the year shows with them. So the things we'll be doing with Create and Craft. So we've got some new panels, um, which Kim's designed some, I've designed some, and they will be exclusive to Create and Craft for a little, for a little while anyway. So I hope you can join me. Hope you all behaved yourselves on Saturday. What what were we doing on Saturday, Lisa? Is that for is that for me? Um, glorious in Paul says Stephanie. Not no ninety thirty five in Northern Alabama. Oh, that is blooming hot, isn't it? That's hot. Whoa. Mm. Is the new fabric your range or someone else's? Um, Jen, the panels are ours. Uh, it's ours. It's, it's mine and Kim's. Um, Everything that we're doing on Create and Craft is going to be mine and Kim's, so they, um, I wasn't there, I don't remember. Oh, on Saturday, oh, oh, no. I, actually, yeah, they were very good on Saturday. I, I think people just w didn't, they, they, they knew you weren't there, Lisa, so they weren't going to wind you up, basically. Uh, it's cloudy driving from Maine to Massachusetts. Going to make the curtains with the tie tops, do you know what the pattern repeat is, please? With that particular fabric, I don't know. I haven't got one of the curtains with me. Is it that? Is it the fabric that I used? Because I can check for that, Jane, and let you know. Um, some else. Some else. Gary's been redesigning this set. I don't know what's happened to me mouse. Um, if uh, send me a message, because I, I miss so many um, messages on on here because they're scrolling up all the time. But if you send me a message to. Um, Oh, I've got so many email addresses. Enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com and just give me a reminder. Next time I'm in the office, I'll, I'll measure the pattern match on that fabric if it's that one that you wanted to use. Um, and at least that worked. Your anti-troll spray worked for Saturday. <laughs> we didn't have anybody on Saturday. That was great. I drug your last secret collection made some lovely cushions. I, um, I sent them, but I guess you have loads. Kathy, I don't remember seeing that. Well, I, I, do, I, I get, so, honestly, so many emails, hundreds of emails, you can imagine, and messages. Um, but I don't normally miss them. If you're sending me a message on YouTube, um, I do read all of the messages. Uh, super moderator. Um, but I don't have time to reply to all of them. So you might get a little heart just to let you know that I'd, I've, I've read it. And thank you for leaving your message. Um, but I get a lot of questions like, oh, that bag that you made with the flap, how do I take the flap up and put a zip in the top? I don't have time to, to actually work all of these things out. But on YouTube, if you imagine, I, I know I've said before, I think I've got 425 videos on YouTube. And when you go onto the YouTube portal to, to look at all of your analytics and everything, all of the messages all come up in a big long row. So if I had one message from each YouTube video, there'd be 400 messages a day all in one row. So I do miss them. I, d I don't get a chance to see all of them. Um, Facebook, I, I, don't tend, I don't tend to go on it that often. So if you really want to get something to me directly, the best thing to do is to email the website, which is enquiries at Um if, if you've got something specific or something that I really need to address. If, if it's how do I make a an iguana out of faux leather, then I, I, I'm, I'm going to pass you on to YouTube because I don't have time to work things like that out. Um, Charlotte says she loves the eco book. Oh, thank you. Yes, I've got a lot. 
Boonchilla. There are a lot of videos there. And, and it's great. And I love YouTube and I love the lives and I love the interaction. And I love the messages, but I, I literally have hundreds of them. It could be a full-time job just answering messages. So if you do, if you do send me a message, please don't send me another one five minutes later being annoyed that I haven't replied because I get, I get that as well. You didn't reply to my message. Didn't say it. Um, hi, Jan. Hi, Tracy. And oh, thank you. Anyway, should we get to business? We, we could just sit and chat all night. I'm quite happy to do that, to be honest. Um, oh, Jane's just finished the shearing dress for her granddaughter. Oh, how lovely. Um, right, OK. We have some new fabric. I'm just going to get the website up on my phone. Um, if you go to the new inn on the Debbie Shaw sewing website, there we go. We've got Morris and Co fabrics, and Kim is. I mean, this is this is what what Kim orders, um, and she's made a really good choice here. I don't seem to be getting any connection there, so let's do it anyway. Look at these; they are beautiful. That's out of the way. <coughs> so Morris and Co. And you know, we've had a look around because we do like to see what other people are doing, and can't really find it. And it's just, I, I don't know why, it seems to be, it's Mor Morris & Co. Um, it just seems to be really difficult to get hold of and it's amazing. The quality you know is going to be exceptional, but the prints, the colours, they're just so beautiful. So these are sold by the half metre, so if you ordered two, then you'll get a full metre, they'll come in one length. Um, but they all go so well together. And what I love about the collection is you don't really need a plane to go with it because that one to me is the plane. So for, for instance, what I mean is if you've got two fabrics like that, I'm not going to put those two together because they're too close. They, they, they fight against each other. So I'd put a plane in the middle to break that up. But the one with the lemons is actually your plane. So if I put that in between those two fabrics now, they both really stand out. That doesn't stand out against that. It, they're, they're too close, they're too busy. But when you put something, let's see if this one works. Nope, that's too close, it's gonna be the lemons again. When you put that in between the two fabrics, it breaks it up so you can actually see the detail on all of the fabrics. So if I went one, two, three, four, that stands out enough against that not to argue with it. And you know, I think that one does as well. So I think in that kind of order would be perfect. But there's orange, there's green, there's blue, there's teal, um, there's rust colours, there's lemon, there's navy, there's beige. There's so many colours that you can mix an aqua. There's so many colours you can mix and match these with. If you did want to break it up with a plane, then there's, there's a lot you can do with that. Um, the quality of the fabric is exceptional. And you know, I, don't, I don't say that lightly um, because, no, I just want to use mobile data and get on the website. Um, if I say, oh, this is lovely quality, and then you get it home and you think, oh, no, that's a, bit, that's a bit awful. It's not very nice at all. Um, you won't trust me. You'll never shop with us again. Um, I do know my fabrics. I've been working with fabrics for most of my life. And I'm not going to say that something is lovely quality if it's not. And this is just is beautiful. Um, it's a, um, a quilting cotton, so it's a reasonably loose weaver fabric, which uh, quilters cotton is normally quite loose because it's better for hand quilters to be able to sew through it like that. Um, but it's a, it's a good quality. And the detail, the, the quality of the fabric just isn't about the way that it feels, it's about the quality of the print. Because the finer the print, the more colours that are on the print, the more expensive it is. Because every one of the colours is printed individually. And you've got lots of colours in this range, um, as you can see, that you can choose from. So this has been a long time coming. Um, we ordered it in... Oh, when was the show at the NEC? February, I think. Um, oh, look, Olive, this is Morris & Co. It's William Morris. I'll just show the salvage which you can't see on that one, it's Free Spirit and it's Morris & Co, so it's a William Morris fabric. I think William Morris actually designed for a few different companies. 
big game, just about to see that one. Morris and Claire. Um, but it's for Free Spirit. Um, but yeah, they are original William Morris prints produced by Free, Free Spirit. They're gorgeous. So again, if you have a look on the website on debbieshawsewing.com and look under the new arrivals, then these are all going to be there under under new in. They're, they're, just, they're just gorgeous. Um, we haven't bundled them together. Um, yes, half yard club members always get a discount on fabric. I know Lisa's been answering those questions there, but you will always get 10% on whatever it is that you order, how much you order. And you will also get your 10% discount on top of any other promotions that we're running. So if we happen to have a sale, um, say we have a sale with 10% discount off everything, you'll get 20% discount because you're a club member and you already get that 10%. If we give you a discount code or give everybody a discount code, you've got 5% off for this weekend only, you will still get your 10% discount on top of that. So um, have a think. Obviously, I'm so passionate about the Half Year Old Club. I'd love you to join it anyway because that you get all these amazing projects um, every month. Oh, show the next one in a minute, Danny. Um, but if you own, if you if you're spending a lot of money on fabric and you only want to join the half year old club to get your ten percent discount, it could be worth it. it. It's across the board off anything. Um, the Morris Bird fabric is it is the strawberry. Thief. You're absolutely right. That is called the strawberry thief. Yes. Um, oh, if you remember already, yes. Don't forget to um, to put your code in. You need to put your code in um, to get your ten percent discount. Okay, so you just need to do that. Um, if you do forget, then don't worry too much because you can um, message me and, um, and we'll apply that discount afterwards. It's a little bit time consuming, but you know, I don't mind doing it. I don't mind doing that because I want, I want you to have your, I'd want my discount. If I forgot to put my discount in, I'd be certainly emailing somebody saying, can you help me? Um, right, so let's do that put those out the way but they're beautiful we were so excited when this came through and, and as I was saying earlier we, we have had it for a week or so um, and we do like to have a look what everybody else is doing and you know see so, oh wouldn't it oh google it because we did and some of this is selling for 35 pounds a meter I know it's a fortune so um, yeah, we wanted to get that absolutely right. We don't. I mean, we're not going to charge you thirty-five pounds a meter for it. That's ridiculous. Um, so I, anyway, that's that's all the politics and by the bys. Um, but that's um, that's what that's what it is. That's the new ones coming up. Um, Carol says made two view bags last week. One for my daughter's birthday and a different one for me. Oh, oh Sylvie, thank you. She says a half yard club is the best club ever. Have we got any new members? I did put a post on. Um, on YouTube, um, showing it was about ten minutes long. I thought you're going to be really bored with this, but just showing you the projects, both both pictorially, and I've got the projects here to show you. And I th actually, there's so many. We've got well, the day you join, you get 48 projects. So, but what I couldn't do is um, show you what was coming up next because I hadn't made it. So if you join today, this is your project for the first of the month. In July, which isn't very long away, is it? Um, so uh, this is actually really easy. I know it's a big bag. So this is the overnight bag. So it's a duffel style of bag, and I deliberately kept the pockets patch without putting extra zips in. It has got two zips in the centre here that meet, and it has got patch pockets on the inside on both sides. So, but when I was when I was thinking about designing a bag like this, because this is something that you asked for, you wanted a duffel bag, you wanted an overnight bag. Um, and I was thinking, right, we can really go to town and put zips on the side and zips on, on the edge and elasticated pockets on the inside and maybe some mesh. And that actually, I didn't want to overcomplicate it, complicate it. I wanted to keep it very simple. So if you've never made anything like this before, you'll be able to make it very easily. 
Um, so the straps I've made out of the same fabric, you could use webbing for those instead. And all of the pockets are just patch pockets, so there's no extra zips or anything like that to put on them. I've used a faux leather for this one, this will be in the instructions. I'm just going to use a canvas for the step-by-step -step instructions. So you don't have to use faux leather, maybe you haven't got a walking foot, you will need a non-stick foot, because there will be top stitching across the top of the faux leather, so you will need a special foot for that. But you don't have to use faux leather for it, you could use, you could just use canvas. And we've also got some firm fleece, which isn't on the website at the moment, um, but it's what I've used for this. So hopefully by the end of the week we're going to have some firm fleece for you as well. So I hope you like it, but if you have a look at the video, if you haven't seen the club before, have a look on my YouTube channel. It's just put in Debbie Shaw, you'll find me. Um, and it was a video that I posted over the weekend and it just shows you the, the project, not all of them, but a lot of the projects over the last two years. Because when you do join, you get two years worth of projects. Um, so it'll show you some of the, you know, the d diverse projects, like the backpack and the overnight bag and the wonky street and the kimono and the cushions and the, the baby bags, uh, j just to show you what it's about. I wasn't going to talk about Half Yard Club, we're going to talk about cushion covers, but I did want to show you that. Because I'm not here on Saturday, remember? I'm at a wedding. Um, so I shan't get a chance to show you this before the first. Hasn't that come around quickly? My birthday on the 4th. I'm another year older soon. So anyway, that's, that's what's coming up. That's what that is. Okay. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Uh, but one of those table presses from, for snaps from cam snaps. I've yet to use them now. A table, a table press from, for snaps. Not seen that. I'll have to have a look for that. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Oh, let me just go back a little bit because I'm mis missing some of your comments there. Not letting me scroll. Um, Julie's just ordered a new sewing machine. Oh, with all the bells and whistles. Going to get busy ordering fabric and sewing. Yippee, she says. Uh, can you say hi to Catherine and Mandy? Oh, Catherine, Mandy, hello. Hello to you. I hope you're enjoying the show. Um, Trish is 50 tomorrow. Happy birthday for you tomorrow, Trisha. Happy 50th. Um, thank you, Shelley. She says, the clothes are worth every penny. Best she's ever joined. Um, Yoti says, lovely bag. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else got a birthday coming up? Be nice to hear from you if you have. Um, chances, the chances of me sitting here waiting for you are high. Having trouble sewing PVC. And if you're sewing um, a PVC or any kind of laminated fabric, you need a non-stick foot. Um, a non-stick foot or a walking foot or a rolling foot, but I'd suggest you get a non-stick foot. It makes all the difference. Um, oh, Susan G's birthday today. Happy birthday, Susan G. Happy birthday, Susan G. Do I have, uh, have to use canvas or can use cotton? Yes, you can use cotton with interfacing, Geraldine. Um, the only reason I've used um, a heavier weight of fabric, actually the fleece that I've used here is quite a stiff fleece, and that really helps. Um, but a firmer fabric is better. If you're going to use cotton, then I'd suggest um, you could use an H640. It would be a little more squashy than this. You could use a Bosal foam, but there's no reason why you can't double up. So if you've got a medium weight interfacing and you put two layers on there, that's going to make your fabric quite firm. So you don't have to use heavy weights of fabric if you've got a, a cotton that you prefer to use. There will be a video for the bag, Angela. I haven't made it yet, but there will be a video for the bag. Getting a bit behind there. Um, oh, Mary, you're lovely. Anyway, we're looking for nearly half past. I haven't even started yet. So new fabrics, tick. New bag, tick. Zippage. So I haven't actually got a cushion pad here. Um, but I just want to show you how to do the zip at the back. So I'm not going to make the whole cushion. I've got, I've got all of this fabric to choose from and I don't know which one to use. Because they're all lovely. Right, so with this style of cushion, um, these are all on the, the new arrivals as well. Um, these are art gallery fabrics. And I showed you these last week actually, isn't there? What's that one called? Um... Camelot Fabrics, I can't remember what they're called, sorry. 
Um, but if you have a look on, on the website under new in, they are there. Hmm. I think I'll use this one because you'll be able to see it better. So I'm just going to scoot backwards. Oh, it's an envelope. I thought I may have used that technique on that cushion, but I didn't. It was an envelope. Okay. With this technique, you'll have a little flap that goes over the zip. You'll need the zip to be the length of the, or the width of the cushion. Um, so if your zip is shorter, it's not going to work. It has to go all the way across from one side to the other. So if you want to do this technique, then make sure that you've got a zip long enough. Otherwise, it's a different technique to insert the zip. And maybe we'll do that next week. Should we do more? Is that a zip overload? We can do another zip next week. So you'd me measure your cushion pad first of all. Hi, Brian Hoover. Um, could you make a Bible cover? That's a good idea, Brenda. So let's, that, that, that's, a, if I put it that way, okay. Actually, let's go that way. So if I'm making a 14 inch cushion cover, I like my cushion covers to be the same size as my cushion pad. So if I'm using a half an inch seam allowance, if I've got a 14 inch cushion pad, I'm going to have a 15 inch square of fabric. Was it the reading cushion? I couldn't remember, Angela. So I've got my zip already. I just measure this, make sure it's big enough. Yeah. Um, I want the 14 inches to be within the stoppers. So I don't want the stoppers to be inside the, the size of the cushion pad. Does that make sense? So if you've got, if I'm making 14 inches, this is actually a 15 inch zip. You measure the length of the zip between stoppers, not from, from tape to tape. So that's a 15 inch zip. Um, so I want at least a 15 inch zip. It doesn't matter if it's a 20 inch zip because we'll cut that down to size. Um, on the website, one of the fabrics does not have a price. Oh, which one is it, Lisa? I shall message my daughter. Um, one of the fabrics doesn't have a private. Oh, don't you love spell check on the website? So if you've got a 16 inch cushion pad, your zip needs to be 18 inches or more. If you've got a 20 inch cushion, and you know what I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be bigger, big enough to be able to cut the stops off. So where's my mat? So let's cut this to size. I'm only going to do the back of this. I'm not making up the whole cushion cover. Um, although I, I was thinking of making another one of the, you know, the cushion that I made to go with the curtains for half yard club. I was thinking of doing another one of those, but I'm not. It's free. Oh, Haley, I don't do free. We do very good prices, but I'm not doing free. <laughs> Is it free? She'll sort it. Right. So I'm just going to trim this so that it's square. And I'll do the whole thing, but only, only for the back of it. Okay. So I'm just taking off the selvage. Off with the selvage. We don't want that there. And then I'm cutting 14 inches across. Let's turn this this way. So that's going to be the width of my cushion cover. So let's square this end off here. And measure 14 inches from there, which is there. Oops. And then I'll need two pieces. So I don't want to cut 14 inches squared this way because one of these is going to overlap. Um, so let's measure. Always better to cut too big than too, than too little. So I'm going to measure nine. So if this was in two halves, so the back of my cushion cover, if that met, it would be seven inches. So I'm adding a couple of inches on there and making that nine inches. This will be too big in that direction, but we're going to cut it down anyway. So I'll just snip across the fold at the bottom here. 
So we've got two pieces of fabric. Like so. So the right width, too long this way. Um, let's take that off there. And do that. Um, so I'm just, I'm just organising myself. Let's put the iron on. Wherever it may be, somewhere down here. Fed the ducks and played in the park. Oh, that was nice. Ducks and granddaughters go together well, don't they, Lisa? And the pink cutting mat, Alice, is on the website. That is available. So I've just um, taken Facebook off my screen somehow. Where have you gone? Just bear with me a second while I try and get Facebook back again, because I can't not have Facebook back. Oh, I haven't gone and deleted that, have I? Where have you gone? Just waiting for the iron to heat up while I try and figure out what I've done with Facebook. I think I've knocked my mouse and sent it spinning across. Um... No, I don't want that. Uh, sent it spinning across my table for some reason. Is anybody on YouTube as well as Facebook? Because it looks like I've just wiped Facebook out somehow. Which is a bit of an odd thing to do. But if you could let me know. I mean, if you're there on Facebook and you're listening and I'm just not answering you, then um, sorry about that. I don't know what I did. I've just knocked my mouse and Facebook has disappeared. I've not done that before. That's interesting. I was still there, Angela. So why aren't you here? Why aren't you there? Okay. Um, it looks like I'm not going to be answering any messages on Facebook because I've lost it strangely but as long as it's still there that's the main thing so so I've just put the iron on and and now I can't find my zip because uh, it's on the floor down here how did it get down there I don't know but it did so what we're going to do is to um, so right sides together. You see what I mean about the stoppers being wider than the actual um, piece of fabric? Oh, thanks, Renette. I, don't, I, I just I can't see it. How odd. Um, so let's take the top part first of all. So I've got my fabric facing upwards. Facebook is there. The cost of the the quarter club, Kathy, it's the half the half yard sewing club. It's five pounds ninety nine a month or sixty pounds for a year. If you subscribe for a year, you get a whole month for free. Um, so what I'm going to do is to sew this right sides together. So I've got the, the slider facing upwards, right sides together, and just sew down the centre of the seam. A lot of the time with zips, you'll see that they've got a little bit of a different weave down the centre, almost like they've got a line down there. Um, so that's the line that you're going to follow. Otherwise, we're just going to sew halfway down the tape. Now, if you have a glue pen and you wanted to glue that in place, then that would be a jolly good idea. Um, so let's, we can, we can do that. So I'm going to pop my glue along the edge of the fabric. You don't have to. It does help a little bit. It's like um, pins on a stick, this stuff. And let's place that again facing down. So the edges are facing. And then I'm just going to go straight down the centre of the zip tape there. So I don't... Oh, oh no, I haven't tested this camera. Oh, look at that, it's all over the place. There we go. So it was a bit bit late. Oh, Renee's on YouTube. Oh, okay. I'm always ignoring you, Lisa. Um, I'm going to move my needle over to the left-hand side um, using the stitch width button on the sewing machine. So I don't have to put the zipper foot on the machine and then just sew straight down the centre. So on my machine, I can use the edge of the foot against the zip coil 
as a guide and just so straight across there and just so all the way across it kind of helps having the zip slider out of the way as well so I'm not sewing around that and that's what we have there have I run out of thread yes I have Sorry about this, let me just put some more thread in the bottom. And let me just have a mouse there. Let me just have a look what's happened to Facebook. Apologies, can't see Facebook at all. Hopefully it's still there. Um, clicking on your live video on Facebook and comment should appear at the side. I haven't even got Facebook uh, at, at all. <laughs> It's not the comments, it's the actual Facebook page has gone. Are we doing a live on Sunday? Oh, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Yes, I think I will. I think I'll do a live on Sunday morning. Because I'm not here on Saturday, because I'm at the wedding. I thought, I, I thought I might pop up on Sunday. Might have some special offers on some fabrics for you. Um, should we say 11 o'clock on Sunday morning? Should we do that? Not going to make anything, but I thought we might we might just come along and have a chat. Because I miss you when I don't see you on a Saturday. So let's pop up on a Sunday, we'll do that. <laughs> Sarah, if only I had a PA to set up my lives. Um the thing is it was all set up and ready to go, was it not? Oops. So again, I don't I don't understand how you can see me on Facebook. Um, when I don't see Facebook. But as long as you do, that's the main thing. But, uh, apologies for not, not answering questions on Facebook. No, let me just re sew there when I run out of thread, which is right back there. So again, just sewing straight down the centre of the zip tape. I love this fabric. It's um, it oh, it's the breakfast one. Oh gosh, what was it called? Oh, Kim will be really annoyed with me. Um, good morning, good morning, club. Oh, rise and shine. It's called the whole range is called rise and shine. Um, right, so that could be the top. It could be the bottom. Let, let's say that's the bottom. So that's going to be the the bottom half of my cushion pad. So I can now top stitch across here just to make that nice and neat. So we'll fold that back again. Oh, it's right over there. And I can move the needle back to the centre position and just sew straight across the edge. Uh, like so. And that does two things. It finishes off the... Um, it finishes off the zip nicely but it also helps to keep that part of the fabric nice and flat so we've got that so that's the bottom half of the cushion so let's do the top so we're going to do just the same again and I'll just make sure my fabric's the right way round because it's directional and this is going to go right sides together to this side of the fabric so glue pen again and, and, and again, this is going to be a little bit too long. I would much rather work with this on fabric that's too big and then cut it down to the right size. Then go through all of this and then make it, make it too small. We can see on Facebook and I think fabric is upside down. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, right. Oh, I should have done that way. That, so that was the top of the fabric. Oh, well, we're doing this upside down. <laughs> so what I thought I'd do here is to have the directional fabrics facing each other. I've always got a way out of these things because I thought the mirror image of the pattern would add to the look of the cushion. Have I got away with that one? Okay. I didn't accidentally make it upside down. It's deliberate. So, um, so I glued along here and let's pop that on there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, up, it's up to you. It's up to you. If you want to have them upside down, then that's, that's entirely your prerogative. 
I, I would suggest you get them the right way around, to be honest. Okay. So good, good try. May I, I didn't know what else to do. I thought I thought that was a pretty good go at getting out of some. So, so if this was recorded, I, in fact, to be honest, if this was recorded, I probably wouldn't notice till I finished. So I'd have to do it all over again. Um, but I could edit that out. But with it being live, I have to make an excuse as to why I made an ex uh, mistake. You see, so what I did. Sure. Let's sew, oh, that's in the wrong place again. Let's sew down the second half of this zip tape. Would it come up because it, oh, I don't know, Denise. Oh, got to move the needle over. Um, Kim gets a little bit nervous in front of the camera. So at the moment, no. She's very good behind the scenes. She keeps herself very busy. Um, can it, the, the fabric that hasn't got the, you know the fabric that hasn't got the price on it? Can let me know what it is, and then Kim can can do that straight away. She's just she messaged back saying which fabric is it. I can't see. So just just let me know, and we'll uh, we'll get that changed. And um, oh no, we're there. Um, so you can rotate. Yeah, I'll, yes. It's so that you can rotate the cushion. Um, where's it gone? Um, so it wears evenly. That that's why I did that. believe that you believe anything uh, one side in the yes one side for the UK and one side for when you're in Australia that that works for me that's a good excuse I'm glad I'm not the only one that needs excuses like this okay <laughs> Irene says, I find it a great comfort that you make the same mistakes as us. Happy accidents, Irene. <laughs> Do you know, if things didn't go wrong, you'd never learn anything. I'm, I'm going to tell you my driving lesson story again. So sorry if you've heard this a million times already. Um, when I learned to drive, which was in 1840, with a Model T Ford, with somebody walking in front of it with a flag, um, my, my driving... Um, the Merton Croissant is missing. Th thanks, Lisa. Um, Merton Tutton Croissant. That's the one. Thank you. Um, now, when I first started learning to drive, I've, I've always been quite inquisitive. Why? Why? How? Um, and my drive, I remember my driving instructor on Coal Lane in Borowash. A uh, big long straight road, which was very quiet, and he said, um, "Right, when when you come, first ever driving lesson, he says, when you come to slow down and stop, put your foot on the clutch, put your foot on the brake, and then you stop." I said, "Why do I have to put my foot on the clutch?" And he said, "We'll see what happens when you don't." Okay, uh, so we're driving down there. Didn't put my foot on the clutch. Put my foot on the brake, and we kangarooed for about ten meters or so down the road. So, okay, that's why I need to put my foot on the clutch. So I never did it again. Um, and I always think if you, if you make a mistake doing anything, it's a good thing because then you'll, you won't do it again. A apart from when I sewed the sleeves in that jacket the wrong way around twice. But, you know, everything is like, you have to take a positive. And don't you find as well, because Kim thinks the same, um, they're not tossed, these ones are directional, Peggy, they are. But we, we'll pretend they're tossed. Um, the second time you do something, it's normally better. So if you have to unpick and start again, normally the second time you do it, it looks better than it did the first time you found that. I find that. We do learn by making mistakes, Richard. It's absolutely true. We don't like it at the time, but when you look back, that's one mistake that you're not going to make anymore. Um, that's why I drive automatic. <laughs> that makes sense, Alana. Right, I'm just pressing the creases out of this fabric because it's annoying me a bit because you know I don't like to work, work with creased fabrics. Okay. Right, I'm leaving the ironing pad underneath that because what we're going to do now, I haven't top stitched the top. I've only top stitched across the bottom. I'm not top. I'm not top. Not top stitching the top. Um, I'm just going to fold this over so that it just covers the zip. So I'm covering the zip and I'm covering the top stitching. I don't want to go too far because I need to get in here to undo the zip at some point. So I just want to cover it. So 
just over that stitching so I don't see any stitching and I don't see any zip and then I'll press it. Oh is it coffee time? Tea, coffee. What is it? Tea or coffee? I don't like gin. Tea. Gin? It's gin. Have I got milk and sugar? Neat. Good work with the sewing. Can you imagine neat gin? Oh, this is lovely. It's <laughs> lovely fabric. Thank you. Gin o'clock. Mind you, I'm normally here, here really early at 10 to 7. I might be thinking about, about gin o'clock. Um, it is right, isn't it? I, I think so. When you, when you do something the second time around, th there's nothing worse than... You think there's nothing worse than having to unpick and start again but the second time you do it, I'm so glad that I actually did that. I'm so frustrated I can't see Facebook anywhere on here. It's ridiculous. There must be loads of you there. Um, I have to leave now. Oh, see you, Marion. Oh, thank you. She says, I'm inspirational and a tonic. Is that a gin and tonic? Don't mind an inspirational gin and tonic. Oh, don't worry, Dad, Lisa, it's not, that's not desperate at all. So I just had a, a fleeting glimpse of a Facebook page which doesn't seem to be coming up. Um, I don't know what I've just done, but YouTube's gone as well. Oh well, I have a cuppa. Um, sorry, this is just really odd because um, Everything's gone blank. I'll carry on, regardless. Um, so I've folded over to cover that. Facebook is still running in the background somewhere, but I can't see it. Just chat amongst yourselves for just a second and I'll see if I can access it in another direction. I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring you because I, I just can't see you. Um, Andrew says we're still there. Martha was sewing with wine yesterday. You you, you lot on your wine, I, I don't know. Let's see if I can see you this way. I'm, try, I'm trying a different route to get onto Facebook just to see if you're there. seem to be on Kimberly's page for some reason. No. Um, okay, d d apologies again for not answering any questions on, on, um, on Facebook. Denise had a very bad day, so glad you're on It's Always a Time. Oh, thank you, Denise. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I'm going to put, uh, put some pins in here just to hold that in place. So I've pressed it anyway, um, but I'm just going to pin it as well. Actually, I'm going to pin it from this side because that's the side I'm going to sew it from. So press it first to hold the pleat in place. So I know that even as I'm pinning, I've got oh gin oh no oh Rita I don't like a gin. Do you know I don't think I've ever had a Guinness. I just don't like the thought of a Guinness. It, it's can, can I, hang on a minute. Oh, my, my, my thing's over there. My thing is over there. Let me see if I can go to history. Oh, no, I don't want downloads. I want history. Uh, recently closed one tab. No, that's YouTube. That's Bing. That was Bing. That was YouTube. That was YouTube. I can't see it on history. Strange. Anyway, so I'm pinning in there. and in there and then I'm just going to sew along the same line that I sewed the zip in or maybe just to the right hand side because you're not going to see these stitches at all <laughs> pass me my thing and let's put that on there and just take the pins out of, oh sorry this camera's camera's in the wrong place that's what happens when I've had a long day at the office and come straight back here messaging Gary on the way saying can you switch everything on for me I'm going to be late I was cutting it fine so 
So again, straight along the same stitch line as before. Oh, thanks, Liana. So that's sewn in, and that is basically it. So my zip's accessible under there. What I would do now would be to open it, chop off this end, and sew over this end with the flap sewn over as well, so that doesn't open up when I'm constructing the rest of the cushion. So this is within the seam allowance. Let's go over there. No, you didn't see that, but you'll see it here. So I've just sewn over with the zip open and chopped those off. So completely hidden zip. Um, if I'd have used the same colour or a mint colour of, um, of thread, then that wouldn't stand out at all. So that's going to be pretty invisible. But it does, as I said earlier, only work with the zip that goes all the way across, that goes right to each end. If your zip stops here, it's not going to work because you'd have to sew that and then sew this, then sew it, it just, it wouldn't work. You wouldn't be able to access it the same. So your zip has to be wider than your cushion cover. So this is going to be too long um, because that's obviously not a square. So the front of my cushion pad, I would now make up, do your patchwork or applique or however you're going to make it, and then plonk this on the top, sew all the way around, and then chop off the excess at the top and the bottom where it's going to be too long. Make sure when you sew this together that your zip is open because you will need to turn it through. Um, oh, Lisa, the both of them Kind, kind of hope so, but that's an awful lot of work. <gasps> um, so I've got all of my William Morris fabrics, including the croissants, my hopefully come together rather than two separate orders. Bernadette, it, it, if that's from us, um, oh, then um, if, if, we, if we spot the order in time, if you order more than one item, we'll bundle them together. We tend, to be honest, we tend to post out... Um, Tuesdays, DPD goes Tuesday and Friday. So if you order on a Tuesday, it'll go on Friday. Um, so those go out twice a week. Um, Royal Mail, um, we, we can do it a, a little bit more often. But if you order something on the same day or sometimes even the next day and we can spot it, then we'll bundle the orders together. Tyler's really good at that, actually. He's good at spotting, um, spotting your orders and putting them together. Then I'll get a message saying, refund a postage on this one. Um, but if you um, if you message enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com and just say, I've got two orders, can you combine the postage? As long as the first one hasn't gone out already, then we will be able to do that for you. So, so yes, don't, don't worry about that. Bernadette, don't worry about that. Um, you'll get a conf confirmation email when the order's been processed. So if you've had one order processed, then it's too late, it's gone. Um, but if you haven't had any processed yet, then yeah, just drop me an email. And uh, I'll let I'll let the guys know that you need to you need them sending out together. Um, thank you. I'm dreadful with this iron, Richard. Honestly, the number of times I've left it on overnight, and there was something against that I didn't even know. <sighs> no, nothing, nothing burning. Just just a rather hot pin cushion. Thank you. Oh, you see, you all noticed it. At least I didn't smell anything. It's not, it's not, it's not burning anyway. One last try on Facebook. Please be there on Facebook. Hate it when this happens. Um, I'm even on my own Facebook page and I can't see me there now. Honestly. Rubbish. Anyway, I'm just going to click on live video and see if it sets me up for a new one or if it's actually there. <laughs> Lisa is not just a nana, she's a nana with a spanner. You don't mess with Lisa. Um, no, it's not like I shall read back through your Facebook comments afterwards. I'm sorry about that again. Um, I don't, I don't that, that was something that I did, obviously, but I can't see it there. So anyway, um, so I'm not here Saturday because I'm at the wedding. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, actually. It's my, my best friend's son, um, her eldest son, 
and uh, I've known him since he was since he was born with jaundice with a little net on his head with yellow yellow skin um, which was quite a, quite a while ago now and um, he's gorgeous and his wife has actually modeled in in one of my one of my books before now so it's going to be a very glamorous wedding and I can't wait for that um, so I, but I will come along on Sunday I don't like leaving you behind I can't go a whole weekend without catching up and having a chat because I like it so much. So um, I'll come along on Sunday um, at about about 11 o'clock. I don't know what we'll do. Might make something, might do another zip. Um, thank you, Lucy. Yes, 11. And that we'll be back to normal again next Wednesday at 4 o'clock again. So I'll be there then. Okay, well, I, I hope that, that was useful. If um, if you do have any requests, then then please do message me i can't guarantee i'm going to be able to do everything that everybody says but i'm trying to make these wednesdays more technique based than project based so if there's any particular techniques or sewing machine feet that you need to to look at then then let me know um i will be doing lots of zips as well because there's lots of ways of inserting zips and i know that can be a little bit daunting for some people um one yeah a, a day for myself cheryl why not fabric and what it can be used for julie that's a good idea we were looking at uh, we're going to be putting together a, a pack of interfacing and waddings and things just, just the stuff that we sell on the website um it's going to take a while to get all of that chopped up and put together but we are looking at that um but kim was saying um it might be quite nice to put just swatches of different types of fabric because the thing with ordering online is that you can't feel it um so you you have to trust people no, really, Elaine says, an avid watch of repeats of Heartbeat on Freeview. Guess who popped up in the episode Hollywood or Bust? Oh, do you remember? Oh, gosh, Elaine, that was, I, I, I can't remember what year that was. It must have been, um, gosh, early, I don't know, early, very early 80s. And I, I did have a part in Heartbeat as uh, as Beryl. And I sh I'm sure I've told you before, so I should have been gone by now, but I won't tell you anyway. Um, Yorkshire Television are, are a really nice, I don't think they're there anymore, but a really nice company to work for. They're, they're just really, really nice people. And um, yes, the lease, I, yeah, I was 12. Um, and I had, and everything is really, re I have told you this before, I'm sure, everything is authentic. So Heartbeat, if you're not aware, is a, a, a programme about a police force in a small village that was based in the 1960s. So my character, Beryl, I was, um, I was playing a fake uh, receptionist in a bit of a scam. And I was wearing a very short skirt and crossed my legs. Um, but I had a beehive that took me days to comb the blooming thing out. It was like a complete head of knots. Um, but everything down to my underwear was authentic 1960s. You didn't see my underwear. It's not one of those type of programs. But I had a pointy bra on and everything. My shoes were 1960s. My pants were 1960s. My bra was 1960s. My clothes were 1960s. I'd got a waist that big, which I did have in the 1960s, but I was probably only six then. Um, yes, everything was really authentic. I didn't realise the repeat. I do, I do get a royalty fee for those programmes that are repeated. So I should be awaiting a fee for that one being repeated of Heartbeat. And I normally get about, about 36p for a repeat. Yeah. I don't know what I'll spend it on this time. <laughs> do, do you know, we were together then as well. Gosh, that was such a long time ago. Anyway, I was going. I was going, wasn't I? So I shall see you again um, Sunday for your run. Let's do 11 o'clock on Sunday. It'll be a little bit impromptu. Um, I don't know what we're going to be doing. Um, oh, thank you, Rose. That's very sweet of you. Um, otherwise, if you can't make it, then I shall be back again at four o'clock in the regular slot next Wednesday afternoon. So I'd love to see you then. Um, <laughs> 1999, was it? I thought it was earlier than that. 99? I was, I, was, I was a lot older then. thought it was a lot, a lot earlier than that. Um, thank you, Cher. Glad you enjoyed. It's 7 o'clock. I'm not normally in bed by now. 
Um, I will do, Jill. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, OET. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, OK, so I shall see you again next week. All right. And um, do, uh, do check out the website. Have a look at those new fabrics, because I don't think these are going to be there for very long at all. And don't forget, as Lisa says, if you are a member of the Half Yard Club, you get your 10% discount when you use the uh, when you use the code in the coupon box. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.